Got to get it, Papa. Well, here I am. And I'm standing out in a field with a plane. <laughs> and you're probably wondering why. It's because I'm at Swamp Stole, that's why. And you're probably wondering, well, what's Swamp Stole? I never heard of that me. Well, you know what Stole is? S-T-O-L. Not, not like you stole something at the, at the Walmart. Uh, no, it's S-T-O-L. And that stands for short takeoff and you don't count the eight and landing right s-t-o-l <laughs> it works it works when you think about it a little bit and uh but there's some some planes here this is in jennings louisiana at the airport right by the interstate you can see the interstate traffic back there somewhere and uh, there's a number of planes and basically it's a competition to see How fast you can make your plane get off the ground and how fast you can make it come down without messing something up <laughs> That's that's basically it uh, The way I understand it and uh, They do these things all over the place and uh, they do one like right here in uh, Jennings, so We can look at a few planes uh, around here and they have some that are flying around somewhere. I'm waiting for one to come land on me. I'm not on the runway, by the way. I'm, I'm, this is where they, they designate area to, for everybody to, to park their planes. And uh, see, some are tied to the ground over here. So uh, they're not going to go anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> but, uh, oh, so I hear somebody's trying to take off right now. I don't know who. I can't see a me. But, uh... Yeah, let me rotate around. Oh, there's a drone. I see a drone over here. It's hard to see because he's real tiny. I just see his little lights flashing. But you see, there's some other planes behind me. And look, there's some uh, big trailers and some stuff. And there's like official stuff back there. I might have to go see about that me. And uh, so that, that's kind of where we are. <laughs> And it's real windy, if you can't tell, if it's not making all kind of noise on the microphone. And this is one of the planes in particular that is really specialized for this kind of thing. And you can see it's pretty small. Here's my hand for scale. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty small, but it, it's got like, you know, typically when you look at wings and stuff, the wings look kind of weird. They're real thick, they tick. They tick tick, but uh, it's a it's a special stole plane, and you can see for a small plane, it's got really big tires. That's so it can kind of bounce a little bit and everything. And you can see all that, and it's a propeller. There's one I almost ran into it. Oh, and I heard something starting up. I keep hearing them start. Oh, there's one way out there. But, uh, yeah, look how the wing is made. Look that. We'll give it a little walk around. And there's some other planes. That, they're not specifically designed for this, but they fit the criteria. And you'll notice that a lot of them have the kind of bigger, puffier wheels and tires. I mean, not wheels, tires. And look at that red one back there. It's got a big dragon on it. This is more conventional style. This is a, a Piper Cub. And I know that because it says so right there with the little the little bear. Look, look that. Oh, and there goes somebody taking off. And there he goes. But uh yeah, this is the red dragon over here. Now he's got little wheels. See, that's more what you expect. But I guess some of it is preference as to 
what works best and how your landing gear is put together. Oh, I think somebody else has taken off. Yep, there he goes. Whoop. And the other guy just came around. Somebody else has taken off too. And boy, he took off quick. I think they started. And uh, yeah, I don't know if y'all could see it. Somewhere it's hard to see on the little monitor thing, but somewhere up there's a, a drone. <laughs> so they get drone footage. Oh, there comes one. They got a good hard wind, so they should be able to take off pretty easy off them, I would think. It picks them up quicker. But see all those, they got that big giant balloony tires. <laughs> Yeah, you can see we've been having some rain lately, so on the ground <laughs> it's pretty muddy. So there's a limited area for me to walk around because I didn't bring my rubber boots with me. But you can see the planes coming in, and this is real speed. See how slow they're coming? That said, though, Jason Brown, really high up. He's coming in. He's slowing down. He's headed into the wind, so it's pushing against him a little bit. Oh. Boom. And then they have to stop. They kind of float in. Like sometimes you'll see a bird do that. They kind of float and they look like they're hardly even moving. And then all of a sudden they drop down and land. That one took off just a little while ago. Boop. Oh, he stopped real quick. They have marks for them to hit when they touch the ground and when they stop and everything. And look, there's some, there's the, the secret look that uh, camera crew <laughs> on the camera mobile. And uh, unfortunately, we, we can't have their footage, but that's okay. Hey, you'll be able to hear some exciting play-by-play -play action too from right here. But here he comes. Absolutely the opposite of what you think. He's got it modulated all those things together. We have this perfect life path. He's a little high, but now guided towards the ground. Through the first of throttle, he's well over the line. Gave up a little bit there. Sliding, 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 sliding. <laughs> The crowd can see us. We're over here in this trailer, and you'll watch every time an airplane goes past us, we're out the window like this. Just like you guys. Thank you all for being here. Admirable, perform admirable performance from Brandon there with a 211 foot landing, 145 foot takeoff. Still not besting his first run with a combined score of 269. And currently in third place, Don Mickey with a score of 428, now on low approach to your left. A little bit different glide pattern than we saw from the previous pilot. Just across the line, heavy under braking, full aft elevator. Gets it stopped. Sub 225. Eric, let's So as we see this, let's check the weather now. Yeah, look how big his tires are. Wind's a little bit stronger, but that cross And look, has the secret look that uh, camera crew is zero. is off course. They're, <laughs> they're supposed to be following him. They're not following my directions. I don't know where they're going. They're probably drunk again. Oh well. But they all lined up. They're going to start taking off.
density altitude there is. Let's see what happens. Now, this airplane is one of the airplanes most considered as a training aircraft. It's the everyday airplane you can take anywhere. It's a Piper Cherokee, but his is a little bit different. He's built this for stolen. And when you see him come in and land with those beautiful wheel pins, throwing mud all over the place because he can, the brakes are locked up. He uses this airplane to the nth of its abilities. Expect to see scores somewhere in the 400 to 500 foot mark. He's got a lot of experience. And He's there he goes. Right now, on the roll in Piperzilla. Getting up to speed, yoke back, and he's off. I will not try to guess that one because it's on the other side of the trailer, but impressive takeoff for any Cherokee. I tell you, watching Jeff fly this airplane all over the country, no matter the density altitude, it's always impressive. Oh, these ch they chase each other. You see, Jay Holt, his first competition not really. with this, I believe, ever in the touring division, flying the exact same airplane as John McArdle. It's going to be really unique to see how their performances differ. I see BG's on the wing. There he goes. Pick that back end up quick. 30 years of experience rotating. And off the ground, sub 250, looks like about 224 feet, just to get specific with it. <laughs> John McArdle now on the line. Jeff Abrams first takeoff, 309. And Jay Holt, Eric, I don't know how you're doing it, 223 feet. Are you getting it? <laughs> Are there someone in your ear from the line giving you this far? Will they pop up? And 12 feet. <laughs> okay, here comes Jeff Abrams now on final. Cherokee admitted that he's already back. Think of for bush flying, but it is quite capable, especially if you fly it by the book. And he does that indeed. You saw a steep approach, clean and clear across the line, getting those numbers on, hard on the brakes, sliding across the ground, throwing mud. And my number for John was exactly right again. I, I need to buy a lottery ticket. 112 foot takeoff for John. Trouncing the competition. That is the shortest takeoff we have seen yet. What John McArdle is doing with this airplane. He bought it because he wanted to take it hunting. He wanted to be able to load out whatever else. You see the wind's still blowing pretty good. And he is doing a great job. Jay Holt now. That beautiful M235. Across the line. Big bounce. Getting heavy into braking there. Always a careful balance when braking on a tail dragger. You've got to have that yoke or stick pull back to counteract the braking action. You can see pilots modulating that. Did a, did a really nice job doing that. Yeah, yeah, you can see right down there the water <laughs> from all the rain. That's a, it's, it's pretty wet. By 15, he's He looks fast though. Waiting for the rest of the flaps. There they are. Slowing it down across the line, safe. Again, a nice bounce, heavy on the brakes. Keeping it balanced there. That was pretty short. It looks to be just over 200 feet, which should keep things safe for Brandon Corn. But we've got two passengers oh, on the three miles. It's on. Beautiful s and J and T6 Texas. We love this aviation community here in Louisiana. It just feels like you're coming into an air show. Like, hey, uh, you guys do the little uh, say hi. <laughs> Pop some smoke and say hi. It's all kind of random action going on. You guys uh, doing a thing? We are doing the thing, and we're glad to have them as a part of it. This airport is bustling, and I want to say a huge thank you to all of our volunteers, but especially our air oh, and look, Combined over 70 this, years the look of that camera mobile is coming back. Let's see if they stay on the, the road or not. I hope he took the lens cap off. Uh oh. He ran out of gas. And here's the most important part of any event for me. And that's all I got to say about that. Deconflicting the T6s and the Cherokee. Great work for the air bosses and the pilots alike. And there he goes. Uh oh, look out. And is it on cue, Jeff Abrams? 
right there for us over the line. Down good. Looking that that nose gear strut compressing under the braking action. He did get up 52 feet longer on that takeoff at 361 foot time. Those little lights looking bright. But here goes John. Power is in. Secondary power is headed coming right up. Getting that tail nice and low, just over the line, only giving up maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 feet. I'm not as specific as Eric. Getting it stopped, he's got the little bit of the poop at the end. That's the technical term on the still circuit. You heard it first from me. <laughs> Looking fast, wait for him to pitch up. He seems to have a tendency in those last 10 feet to start pitching up more and more. There it is, right there. Elevator's coming up, gets across the line. Heavy on the braking, watch those push wheels lock up. Get your hands together for an impressive display there from John McCarter. John's in an interesting spot right now. In general, I think the, all the planes on that side over there are the competing planes. And there's some similarities between them. Uh, they all have propellers. <laughs> and uh, they all have one wing, you notice. Unlike the, uh, the the steerman back here. Yeah. If he can fast uh, 78, it's going to help him hold on to the. Look at how slow he's flying. Nose down with it as he gets a little slow. Here we go. We're over the line, giving up some footage there. It's not going to best it. it was uh, not going to be his best takeoff. Maybe but. would have if he would have landed closer to the line. I think he gave yep. up too much over the line there. You want to get in on it, you can, uh, even in the crowd. Oh, there we go. Jeremiah Stimpton's been released. And he's off short in that Rams from March, Missouri. Remember, the score to beat we have for sport class right now is currently a tie between Justin Tisdale and Matt Bastide with 179. Tiger Shark hovering off into the air. That takeoff for Jeremiah Stapleton, 90 feet. Waiting to see what Joel Middleway does. Patrick Beckett's here now. Off really short, maybe around 55. <laughs> okay, Joel Milloway was 62 feet. Patrick McIntyre, 65 feet. We've got another sub-heat grudge match on our hands. Yes, Alex, it is It is pretty funny. Here's Jeremiah now, right on the line. It's good. He gave up a little bit of footage. Stick full back. He's getting it stopped. Those tires just leaving big divots in the mud. <laughs> practice yesterday was putting in super impressive numbers. Good over the line, kicking up some mud, getting it stopped. Woo -hoo -hoo! Oh man, sub 75 feet. Pat now on short final. Interesting, between these two aircraft, Pat's upgraded his a bit aggressively. He's got a larger engine on the front. Done some other work to it. Move the flap handle. I guess the traditional Rams S7 flap handle placement isn't as ideal as maybe what we call the Cup Crafters model. It's up in front of him now. Here he is, over the line. Good, heavy on the brake, stick full back, sliding a little bit in the mud. There's Pat Mackins here, also coming in super short. Let's see what we've got cooking here. Joel Milloway, takeoff 62, landing 69. Pat McIntyre, takeoff 65, landing 72. They are within striking distance of each other. We have two rounds to go here in what we're calling echo heat of the sport class. That's kind of the vision we have with it is to, to 
kind of blend the two worlds together and get people that are in the sim, get them out, you know, into real planes and stuff like you're seeing me here today. Nick Ardillo, good over the line. Stick pull back, heavy on the brakes. Stopping right at uh, maybe like 120 pace. His takeoff was 85 feet. Very respected announce. I think we, you and I announced yeah. together for Swamp Eastol. <laughs> Here's Ed Boyd now, kind of floating it in. A little bit of extra energy compared to Nick. Eastol pilots. Um, I think they really appreciate the love that you guys have shown and. Uh, there's Kelly now stopping around the same place as the last two competitors. We had a 110 foot landing for Nick Rodillo and a 159 foot landing for Edward Boyd. The 85 foot takeoff. It's Kelly's last name. Dropping that left wing just a little bit, but he's got it under control, no problem. And when we see the wing drop, most of the time that's when you have a gust come in and out. I would say definitely down here we do a lot of slips to get into short strips, definitely with tall trees on each other. Good over the line. Beautiful, beautiful. And I can hear uh, my ears, I can hear his uh, angle of attack indicator going off. Yeah, his tall horn is beeping on him. That's what you want. Uh, all of these approaches when you're coming. His best so far, actually. 180. So that's uh, pretty competitive. That's very impressive out of 100 horsepower Cub 11. And as you can see there's a few planes that come in they come and go it's just like when the steerman thing's going on they kind of come and go during the day there's some to just visit and stuff and you kind of wonder it's like well i wonder where did people stay when they flying around in the airplane well they they don't stay in their airplane when they are sleeping <laughs> in general there is a hotel there's two hotels right here but um if you see off in the distance there there's some tents i think some of them camp out they fly over they get their plane situated and they camp out. Look that. <laughs> it's like Gumby scooting around over there. But uh, anyway, yeah, they, they forego the hotel and they just uh, camp out in their tents. And it's, so it's an exciting Look that style adventure. And uh, I guess that's why I came over by this thing. Oh, look, there goes another one taking off. It's a continual action-packed adventure over here. But there's quite a variety of planes. And here you can see some of the, uh, the camping facilities that they set up uh, for some of the people. There's like a whole village set up over there. And uh, there's exciting uh, I-10 traffic in the background. And, and there's even some planes parked back, way back here in the corner. And uh, oh, um, yeah, those, those, those things, that, that big thing right there, that's not a plane, by the way, in case you were confused. Well, it's sure a cool event out here. And uh, the fact that the mud's starting to dry up a little bit is pretty cool too. But they said where they're landing and taking off, it's still pretty, pretty wet. <laughs> and they tend to, their brakes lock up and they slide. So, <laughs> That's that's kind of a challenge, but that's kind of what the point of this one is, because it's the swamp stole. So there you go. But uh, this thing started yesterday or Friday. Today's Saturday, by the way. And um, if yesterday it was even wetter than from what I understand, and so it was, and the wind was different and everything. Today the wind's just right for them, and. Uh, it, it was making some challenges and stuff, but they, they had fun yesterday, too. And uh, so, there you go. Yeah, if you ever get a chance, keep an eye on this. And they, they do live stream these events on the internet. If you can figure that out, you got to find their, uh, their super uh, website. And I'll put a link to it in the, down below so you can see that and maybe try to watch that. And they probably, I'm guessing, that they have videos of past events and stuff like that that you can look at too. So, anyway, in the meantime, I have to get going. And uh, I'll see you next time on, on Look That.